Another great new feature in Blender 2.76 are point density textures in cycles. They have been brought to you by the efforts of Project Gooseberry. And the idea is to render points in 3D space as volumetric spheres. The source of the points can, for example, be a, the vertices of an object, like here, Suzanne, or a particle system. And you will also need another object you will use to render the points, just like for a smoke simulation where you need a domain. And the device should be set to CPU because they are not available on the GPU yet. So let me simply create a new material here and use an emission shader. I will plug it into the volume socket of the material output. This way we get volumetric emission here. I could also use volume scatter or volume absorption, but I will use emission because it just renders a little faster. And now let me select texture and there point density. Now I will plug the point density output into the strength input of the emission shader and everything is black now because we did not specify our source yet. For this I will select object vertices and select my CSR. And now you see the points already, they are rendered, but let me decrease the radius to make them smaller so you can see things more clearly. And what you'll see here is that they are totally not aligned with the actual positions of the points in 3D space. For this we need world space. Now they are perfectly aligned, but when I move my object around, then you see that points outside of the object that has the point density texture, I will call it domain from now on, are cut off. The other option here is object space. Now I can move my domain freely and the points will move with it, but they are not on the, of the same scale as our object because the source object will be scaled up to the bounds of the domain and then the points will be rendered. And the idea behind this is, for example, if you're using clouds, you can place your domain somewhere in the sky where you have the clouds and the object where you have the vertices or the particles from that could be on another layer or somewhere hidden in your scene. And you can still even make changes directly to the clouds by, for example, scaling the domain. So this is the rationale behind object space and world space. For the option interpolation and resolution, I will change to another layer where I have set up a particle system. So let me select my cube and then particle system and of course world space. And here you see our um, particles rendered as spheres. But if I switch polar interpolation to closest, then you will see that the scene is actually consisting out of small cubes. They are called voxels and they're actually pretty much the same as the voxels in for, that are used for rendering smoke. And the idea of interpolation is to interpolate between the voxel voxels to make things look smooth. And uh, when I select linear, it's already pretty good, but at some points, like up here, you can still see lines and everything because, well, it's based out of cubes. And if I switch to cubic, this should be gone and everything should be perfectly smooth. So interpolation is to make things look smooth. And now resolution, well, resolution is for the detail. So the higher the resolution, the smaller my little cubes are and the more detail of the underlying texture they can get or the underlying points. So this is mainly increasing the resolution is mainly something you need to do if you have a lot a lot and lots of very small points with a small radius, then you need a higher resolution, but usually the default should be fine. So let me change interpolation back to linear. And now let me show you what's about this color source. This is only available for particles and the color source here, particle H, will be output here from the color socket. So let me connect this here. And you will see that in the middle it's very dark and it gets brighter the older the particles are. That's because the color source output is a RAM from black to white with black meaning the particle has just been born and white meaning the particle is old and will die. So we can use a color ramp to visualize this more clearly. Now you will see that it's going from this green here through all the colors of the rainbow, the older the particles are getting and in the end they're, when they're dying, they're blue. And another option here is speed. And for this, I have created a system where particles are going up, then they're slowing down and falling down again, because now you see that um, they're actually very fast, more than one, and then speed of more than one, but then they will slow down. You'll have other colors and then they're going faster again. So this is speed. And the last option is velocity. 
And that is actually not really useful with a color ramp because it will output colors directly, not just black and white, but individual colors per channel. And the velocity basically means in which direction is the particle traveling. So the particles that are traveling along the x-axis are red, those traveling along the y-axis are green, and those traveling along the z-axis are blue. So this is the idea behind particle velocity. And you notice that the other arms are gone now. They are still there. They are just using negative color because they are traveling at negative speed. So one last thing I'd like to show you. When I make the world brighter, you will notice some interesting changes of the color. So the negative color now comes into play. So green is, of course, the positive one. So the negative one would be red. And for the red channel, the negative one is green. And for the blue channel, the negative one is yellow. And now let's turn this up. Now you see some pretty interesting effect. So this is it for point density textures and cycles. Have fun with them and create something cool.